The southern Patagonian ice field straddling the border between Chile and Argentina encompasses a region of rugged terrain characterized by towering peaks and expansive glaciers. Amongst the vast array of geological features present in this region, a narrow finger of rock stands out, measuring 3,128 meters in height that has been the topic of debate within the climbing community for over half a century. The recent occurrence of an incident near this natural wonder has rekindled discussions surrounding its history and notoriety, causing it to become the focal point of conversation amongst climbers across the globe. We are talking about the Cerro Torre and a tragedy that unfortunately took place in the place. Stay tuned till the end to get to know more about the heart-wrenching accident. Disasters are sudden, catastrophic events that cause widespread damage, destruction and loss of life. They can be caused by natural phenomena such as earthquakes, hurricanes, floods and wildfires, or by human-made incidents such as terrorist attacks, industrial accidents or transportation disasters. Natural disasters are the most common type of disaster and are often unpredictable in their occurrence and severity. Earthquakes, for example, can strike at any time and cause widespread destruction of buildings and infrastructure, as well as loss of life. Hurricanes and floods can cause extensive damage to homes, businesses and communities and often result in long-term recovery efforts. So, let's start the video with the protagonist, which is the place itself. The rock structure in question has garnered interest due to its immense height and unique location, which creates an unparalleled challenge for even the most experienced mountaineers. Since its discovery, this natural wonder has been the subject of numerous attempts at scaling, many of which have ended in failure due to its unpredictable weather patterns and technical difficulty. Despite the danger involved, climbers have continued to be drawn to this challenge, and as a result, the history of attempts at this landmark is fraught with danger, risk and controversy. The recent incident has only served to further heighten the interest in this rock formation, as the climbing community grapples with the implications of what has occurred. The incident brought to light the dangers and uncertainties of climbing this natural wonder, which served to reinforce the legacy of its contentious history. As the climbing world continues to reflect on this recent occurrence, it is evident that the mystique and allure of this natural wonder will continue to captivate the imaginations of climbers for years to come. The concept of fair means in rock climbing, as well as the emotional and subjective issue of climbing purity, are central to the discourse surrounding the ascent of Cerro Torre. The vast quantity of news articles and blog entries circulating on this topic underscores the complexity of the controversy surrounding the three climbers involved. The contentious nature of this issue is reflected in the thousands of responses generated in certain forum threads. In order to gain a comprehensive understanding of this ongoing debate, it is necessary to delve into the intricate details of the climbers' methods and assess their adherence to established climbing standards. Only then, can we begin to make informed judgments regarding the ethics and integrity of the ascent? And on January 29th, Corrado Pesca's arduous rescue operation came to a tragic conclusion when a drone found his lifeless body amidst the snow. Pesca and his partner, Thomas Aguillo, had been caught in a calamitous avalanche while scaling Cerro Torre, leading to severe injuries for both individuals. Although Aguillo managed to descend and ultimately survive, Pesquet's incapacitating injuries prevented him from doing the same. Tragically, Pesquet passed away as the weather deteriorated, hampering helicopter rescue efforts. The event underscores the danger inherent in mountaineering and the importance of thorough preparation and risk assessment. According to recent reports, Aguillo is currently receiving medical attention at a hospital and is recovering satisfactorily. However, the windy weather in the region persists and is so severe that its effects can even be felt in El Chalton. In response to the situation, several friends and colleagues of Pesquet have expressed their intention to travel to El Chalton to assist the recovery of his body. Carolina Kodo of the El Chalton Rescue Center has confirmed that several of Pesquet's companions have already made plans to join the recovery effort. Now, before going to the rescue, let us recall the tragic accident that occurred on January 25th, the ascent of the east face of Cerro Torre that began at 11.30 a.m. by Della Bordea, Desia Como and David Bacci, with the ultimate goal of reaching the Triangle Snowfield. The path taken was originally established by Cesare Mestri and Tony Egger in 1959. 
The climbers ascended an additional five pitches before arriving at the English Box, a small man-made shelter. Despite its historical significance, the English Box is now in a state of disrepair, with only a few creased metal sheets remaining. The structure is no longer able to provide any form of protection to climbers. The shelter was likely constructed to provide protection from the extreme weather conditions that are common on the mountain, including high winds and heavy snowfall. While the box may no longer be functional, it serves as a reminder of the difficult and often perilous conditions that mountaineers must face when attempting to summit Cerro Torre. The British Deirdre route is a challenging climb that requires a high degree of technical skill and experience. The route is known for its difficult pitches and lack of ledges which can make it a challenging climb for even the most seasoned climbers. The use of a portal edge is essential for climbers attempting the route as it provides a safe and comfortable place to rest during the climb. In the context of mountaineering, a portal ledge is a portable hanging tent-like platform designed to be suspended from a rock face or other vertical surface, enabling climbers to rest and sleep while on a multi-day ascent. In the present scenario, three men have set up their portal ledge at a particular location, implying their intention to halt there overnight. While occupying this position, they noticed two climbers, Thomas Aguillo and Corrado Pesque engaged in installing ropes on the first pitches of their climbing route, roughly 150 metres away from Della Bordea's group. The installation of ropes or fixed protection is a common practice in mountaineering, serving as a safety measure for climbers by reducing the impact of falls. Upon completing their work, Aguillo and Pesque return to their tent, suggesting the end of their day's climbing activities. On January 26, Della Bordea, Bachi and Desia Como eventually reached the British Deirdre route following a difficult day. The route included a number of pitches that posed immense challenges with no ledges available and a continuous overhang on the face. To rest, they placed their portal ledge over the empty space, which allowed them to observe Pesque and Aguillo advancing along their own line during that day. Eventually, Pesque and Aguillo decided to establish their camp on a ledge situated roughly 50 metres to the right of the English box. Observing other climbers on the route is a common occurrence, as climbers often use different lines and strategies to tackle difficult terrain. The decision by Pesque and Aguillo to set up camp on a ledge near the English box demonstrates their own expertise and familiarity with the route, as they were able to identify a safe and suitable spot to rest during their climb. On January 27th, Della Bordea, along with his two colleagues, embarked on a mountaineering expedition to ascend the north face of Cerro Torre. During their ascent, they encountered two climbers, Pesque and Aguillo. Notably, both parties had the common objective of ascending a new path with only 300 metres left to reach before the summit of the tower. Considering their similar goals, both groups agreed to cooperate, and together they continued their ascent. In terms of leadership, the climbers were in descending order of authority, with Aguillo leading the way, followed by the three Italians and then Pesque. At five o'clock, Pesque and Aguillo successfully reached the summit of Cerro Torre, with the three Italians joining them 30 minutes later. Once at the summit, the two groups congratulated each other, a gesture of mutual respect for each other's climbing ability and determination. However, after the exchange of pleasantries, the two groups parted ways, each descending their respective path. The events that occurred on this expedition are a testament to the camaraderie and spirit of cooperation that exists within the mountaineering community. Both teams adopted two different ways to climb the mountain. The Italian team spent the night on the summit and descended via the southeast ridge. They chose to descend at night on their ascent route to minimise the risk of falling frost or ice blocks. The other team, consisting of Cora and Thomas, pursued a different strategy and descended on their own route. They arrived at a bivouac along their route in the middle of the night and made a brief stop to rest. However, an avalanche of ice blocks struck them, causing severe injury to Cora and rendering him immobile. This shows the importance of descent strategies while mountaineering, as each team chose a different route based on their experience and judgement. The Italian team chose a more common route, while Cora and Thomas opted for a different path. The use of specific terminologies such as Southeast Ridge and Bivouac conveys the technical expertise of the climbers. Additionally, it also showcases the risk associated with mountaineering, including the potential danger of falling frost or ice blocks and the possibility of injury. The climbers' differing perspectives on descent strategies also demonstrate the importance of communication and cooperation among team members to ensure a safe and successful climb. Overall, this provides a brief but detailed account of a mountaineering expedition, emphasising the technical and strategic aspects of climbing a mountain and the inherent risks involved. 
On January the 28th, Pesquet and Guillaume began their descent on the north face in the dark, eventually reaching a location where they had previously left their sleeping bags and bivy gear. Here, they decided to take a break. It was during this time of rest that an avalanche of ice and rocks struck them, causing serious injury to Aguillo and paralyzing Pesquet. It is believed that the decision to pause in a potentially hazardous location may have contributed to the climber's injuries. This certainly highlights the importance of careful planning and decision-making in mountaineering, as well as the need for climbers to be aware of the risks and hazards associated with their chosen routes. And in the current scenario, in accordance with Carolina Kodo of the El Chalton Rescue Center, several of Pesquet's acquaintances have expressed their desire to journey to El Chalton to aid in the retrieval of the deceased's body. Renan Ozturk, a climber photographer, recently announced on Facebook that Jonathan Griffith, a close friend and fellow climber, intends to retrieve the body during a small window of time this week. However, previous endeavours to recover the body were thwarted by the severe weather conditions of Patagonia and the intricate location of the climber. Despite a significant communal effort, the previous attempts have been unsuccessful. Aniko and Iko Pu, distinguished mountaineers, have articulated the extingent nature of emergency responses in El Chalton's mountains, highlighting the limited time available for reactions due to the brief and rapidly closing weather windows. The mountainous terrain presents additional challenges as potential rescuers are often physically exhausted after their own strenuous ascents. Moreover, the steep and treacherous topography poses further complications as climbers scaling vertical walls cannot be extracted by helicopters. These imposing natural features necessitate a sophisticated approach to mountain rescue operations, including specialized training, equipment, and strategies to address the formidable demands of these extreme environments. The rescue highlights the challenges that possible rescuers face in attempting to save climbers in precarious situations, particularly in the context of Patagonia. Inoku Pu, a seasoned climber, notes that there are limited options available to potential rescuers, which often detail undertaking treacherous ascents on routes that have been mastered by only a handful of individuals. Despite these difficulties, various parties, including the Argentine rescuers, the army helicopter and the climbers in Patagonia, demonstrate a willingness to mobilize and provide aid in these circumstances. However, despite their best efforts, the harsh mountain terrain and the severity of Pesquet's injuries ultimately proved insurmountable. This emphasizes the importance of assessing the feasibility of rescue operations in these settings and the need to balance the imperative to save lives with the safety of all involved. In a publication released by Ragni de Lerco Alpine Club, Matteo della Bordea and David Bacchi have documented their ascent of Cerro Torre, a mountain located in Patagonia, South America. Along with Corrado Pesche and Thomas Aguillo, the Italian climbers accomplished the feat on the same day. Additionally, Matteo Ziacomo was the third member of the group that participated in the expedition. The report provides valuable insights into the physical and technical challenges faced by the climbers during the ascent, as well as their strategic approach to the climb. The publication serves as a testament to the climbers' remarkable abilities and serves as a useful reference for future mountaineering expeditions to the region. Observing other climbers on the route is a common occurrence, as climbers often use different lines and strategies to tackle difficult terrain. The decision by Pesquet and Aguillo to set up camp on a ledge near the English box demonstrates their own expertise and familiarity with the route, as they were able to identify a safe and suitable spot to rest during their climb. In 2016, Mr Pesquet and Thomas Aguillo triumphantly conquered the Torre Ega, 2,880 metres mountain in Patagonia, Argentina, by climbing the strenuous route called Psycho Vertical. The route was first ascended by the Slovenians, Janis Jeglik, Silvo Caro, and Franek Kanetz in 1986, and was regarded as incredibly challenging due to its steep granite terrain. Mr. Pesquet and Mr. Aguillo conquered the 950-metre-high Duretissima of the mountain in alpine style, which is a highly respected and traditional approach to climbing, requiring climbers to climb the mountain using minimal equipment and with limited external support. Such accomplishments in mountaineering not only serve as a testament to the climbers' perseverance and commitment to their craft, but also to their dedication to exploration, innovation, and pushing the limits of human potential. In the realm of mountaineering, conquering a peak and its challenging routes often represents a crowning achievement for mountaineers. It is an embodiment of perseverance, technical skill, and a deep connection with the natural environment. For the two mountaineers in question, their triumph of ascending the Cerro Torre North Face route was undoubtedly a momentous accomplishment. However, this success was short-lived, as their fate 
soon transformed into a gruelling and terrifying experience, leaving them in a state of despair. The transformation of their dream to a nightmare highlights the dangers that are inherent to mountaineering and the unpredictable nature of mountaineering environments. Despite their technical proficiency and endurance, the mountaineers were subject to the whims of fate, a stark reminder of the perilous reality of high-altitude mountaineering. The tragic death of Paolo Pesce, despite his demonstrated skills, knowledge and humility, highlights the capricious nature of fate and the inherent risks associated with mountaineering. The circumstances of his death leave one to ponder the fleeting nature of life and the precariousness of even the most experienced climbers. Nonetheless, the heroic efforts of his fellow climbers and the residents of El Chalton in saving Thomas from a similar fate illustrate the strength of camaraderie and the solidarity that exists amongst those who share a passion for the mountains. However, as much as this collective effort is admirable, it does not diminish the loss of human life and the grief that his loved ones must bear. This tragedy serves as a reminder of the importance of safety in mountaineering and the need for the utmost caution and preparation when venturing into the mountains. Ultimately, the death of a man cannot be offset by even the most remarkable acts of unity and solidarity, but it can serve as a call to action to ensure that such tragedies are prevented in the future through continued vigilance and preparedness. The awe-inspiring magnificence of Cerro Torre, a mountain peak situated in the Patagonian region of South America, remains a perennial attraction for avid climbers who seek to push their physical and mental boundaries to the limit. Despite the challenges and difficulties involved in scaling this majestic mountain, climbers are drawn to the intense sense of accomplishment and fulfillment that comes from conquering such a formidable natural obstacle. Moreover, the striking beauty of the surrounding landscape, accentuated by the crystal clear waters and the radiant glow of the sun, serves to enhance the experience and evoke a deep sense of wonder and appreciation in those who brave the ascent. Indeed, the desire to undertake such a daunting challenge and to experience the sublime beauty of Cerro Torre is a testament to the indomitable spirit of human beings who are driven by a primal instinct to test their limits and explore the vastness of the natural world. To sum up, climbing mountains is an activity that can be both exhilarating and dangerous, as you see in the video. Therefore, it is essential to prioritize safety while engaging in this activity. Climbers must take the necessary precautions to minimize these risks, including carrying appropriate gear such as helmets, harnesses and ropes, and ensuring that their equipment is in good working condition. It is also essential to stay informed about weather conditions and to have a clear understanding of the terrain and the potential hazards it presents. Prioritizing safety while climbing mountains not only helps to ensure a successful ascent, but also increases the chances of returning home safely. We hope you found our videos informative and thought-provoking. If you haven't already, be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update from us. And remember, disasters can happen to anyone, but by coming together and sharing knowledge, we can build a safer and more resilient future. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.